Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. There's been a recent interest in reviving morning prayer as found in the Book of Common Prayer. And I thought it might be helpful if we spent a little time today just looking at the morning prayer service so you knew what we were talking about. Praying the daily office is a faithful way to mark the time of our days as sacred and acknowledging the presence of God in our lives. The roots of daily prayer are found in early forms of Jewish daily prayer. Both lay and ordained Christians have been praying some form of liturgical daily prayer from the very earliest days of Christianity. However, if you're unfamiliar with the daily office, just picking up the Book of Common Prayer and opening up to one of the pages can be very intimidating. The different rubrics or instructions can be confusing and finding your way through the different sections of the Book of Common Prayer can seem daunting. Hopefully, this will guide you through the service of morning prayer. During this time of uncertainty, we need to be grounded in a daily spiritual discipline. Setting aside time each day to spend with God is important. It will help to strengthen our spiritual, mes spiritual muscles and mark the time of our days as sacred. We'll use the morning prayer service found in the Book of Common Prayer as our guide and we'll move through the service step by step in this tutorial, page by page, number by number, so that you can learn this beautiful, ancient, scriptural, rhythmic pattern of prayer. One of the gifts of praying the daily office is that in doing so, we join with the countless saints from ages past and present, who from around the world and across the centuries offer up their prayers to God using these same words. So grab your Book of Common Prayer or the service leaflet that I printed out and let us pray. One of the particular geniuses of the Book of Common Prayer is the ease of daily prayer. First, we'll share a little history. When Thomas Cranmer was working on the first Book of Common Prayer in 1547, he condensed the monastic prayer service of Matin, Lauds, and Prime into daily morning prayer. And the monastic prayer service of, of Vespers and Compline into daily evening prayer. This made them far more accessible to the common person. In the 1979 Book of Common Prayer, it goes even a few steps further and condenses the daily office into short one-page daily devotions for individuals or families. And that begins on page 136. That would be a good thing to look into when we're finished. Those are fairly self-explanatory and they don't require additional instruction other than what the text and rubrics explain. For the purposes of these tutorials, we'll be using right to forms of daily prayer. It's easiest if you use an actual copy of the Book of Common Prayer, but all you have to do for you digital types is type in online BCP and you can get that on your computer. So we begin on page 75. So open your Book of Common Prayer to Daily Morning Prayer, Rite 2, page 75. It's important to remember when praying the daily office that even if you pray by yourself, you should use the plural pronouns as they're written in the prayers. Although you may be physically by yourself, you're joining thousands around the globe and in time and in prayer. You should also endeavor to pray the daily office verbally or out loud rather than simply read it. Also remember that the officiant simply means anyone, lay or ordained, who is reading the service. Praying the office by yourself, you are the officiant. Your first rubric or instruction is to get your Book of Common Prayer, either a hard or digital copy, and follow along. We begin with the opening sentence on page 75. 
And you'll see that the first category of sentences is from Advent, and then Christmas, and then Epiphany, and then Lent. Since we're in the season of Lent, we'll use one of the Lenten sentences to begin. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. The small type or fine print that you see is known as the rubrics or the liturgical instructions. The first one tells us that we should begin reading that first sentence. Now we could also follow another option, moving on to page 78, where it says at any time, and we could choose one of those sentences to begin. The earth, the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. And then we move on to page 79 to the confession of sin. You may choose either the longer or the shorter introduction to the confession. I'll use the shorter one because that's the one that we use when we introduce the confession in our Eucharist service. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. And then we keep a little bit of silence Time for you to think about anything in particular that's bothering you or that makes you feel the need to repent. And remember that repent means to turn away from sin and back toward God. Allow an appropriate amount of silent time to elapse and then you'll begin to pray the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Traditionally, we kneel or stand to do this, but if you're by yourself or perhaps even in a public place, sitting is just fine, as it is throughout the entire daily office. Following the confession, we turn to page 80 for the absolution. While only a priest can properly pronounce God's absolution on a penitent, you as the reader are empowered to pray for God's absolution. You simply substitute the pronoun, pronouns us for you and our for your, as indicated in the rubric near the top of the page. So reading on page 80, your absolution would sound like this. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Now we move on to the invitatory. Remaining on page 80, the next rubric instructs you to stand. Again, you may do so, or you can remain seated by yourself, praying in a public place like a coffee shop or your workplace. If you're by yourself, you will read both the parts of the officiant and of the people. These opening lines, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise, are very ancient and have been prayed for centuries. Following them is said the Gloria Patri, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. If we're not in the season of, of Lent, then we add Alleluia, but we won't for today. So we continue. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Now, the only problem is, we're in Lent. So again, we see these seasons in Advent, on the 12 days of Christmas, Epiphany, in Lent. So we will read, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, 
Let us adore him. Okay, and continuing on. Then we say one of the three options for the invitatory, all found on page 82 and 83. You may select from the Venite, which is actually taken as a portion of Psalm 95, the Jubilate, which is Psalm 100, or the Pascha Nostrum, which is compiled from three different sources in the New Testament. After you pray the invitatory you selected, you repeat the antiphon you selected before it. So remember our antiphon was from Lent. So we remember that the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. We'll say the Venite. Whenever I say the Venite, I think about the times that I spent probably in the the late 50s or the early 60s with my dad in church and he would follow along the print in the prayer book with me. And the Venite, of course that was when we didn't do Holy Eucharist every Sunday, we did morning prayer three Sundays and Holy Eucharist one Sunday. We would say the Venite and I kind of think of those times and it's almost like being with him again. So join me in the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for the joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. All right, when we have finished the invitatory, now we move on to the psalm for the day, and that's one of the challenging parts. On page 80, we are directed to read the psalm. We'll pray a psalm appointed for the day, but how do you know what psalm is appointed for the day? Well, there's a number of ways that you can find out the appointed day. Remember that we have a daily lectionary, and that's found in the back of the prayer book, but I'm not going to go into how to use that today. There's two easy ways that you can find it. One is by going online to www.lectionary.com. And the other way is to pick up a little copy of Forward Day by Day. And on each page of Day by Day, you have the lectionary printed right at the top. So that makes it very easy to read. <clears throat> Our lectionary today asks that we read Psalm 120, 121, 122, 23, 24, and 25. So we'll begin. When I was in trouble, I called to the Lord. I called to the Lord and he answered me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from the deceitful tongue. What shall be done to you and what more besides? O oh, you deceitful tongue, the sharpened arrows of a warrior, along with hot glowing coals, how hateful it is that I must lodge in Meshach and dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I to live among the enemies of peace. I am on the side of peace, but when I speak of it, they are for war. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. 
Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been at our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem, so does the Lord stand round about his people. From this time forth forevermore, the scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. So 
So one of the helpful things in looking for what psalm is the appropriate psalm for the day is to know what the week is in the liturgical year. Now this past Sunday was Lent 5. And so in the back of the prayer book, the, the lectionary is organized by weeks according to the liturgical week. So in week five of Lent, you would find Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so each day after that, there is the, the readings for that day. Now in the second part of this tutorial, we'll begin by reading the, the other readings, the readings from the Bible, from the New Testament and the Old Testament. And the New Testament reading for today is found in Corinthians. So it's found in Corinthians 14, and the first verse is 20. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can look up 1 Corinthians, that's in the New Testament. Remember the first four books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the Gospels. And then you have the epistles that follow. So chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking, rather be infants in evil. But in thinking, be adults. In the law it is written, by people of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people. Yet even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. While prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for believers. If therefore the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophecy, an unbeliever or outsider who enters is reproved by all and called to account by all, after the secrets of the unbeliever's heart are disclosed, that person will bow down before God and worship him, declaring, God is really among you. What should be done then, my friends, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation? Let all things be done for building up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only one or two at most, and let one interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let them be silent in church and speak to themselves and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to someone else sitting nearby, let the first person be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is a God, not of disorder, but a God of peace. So my friends, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but in all things should be done decently and in order. Here ends the reading. Now when we do morning prayer, it's important to remember that the gospel even though it comes from one of the Gospels, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, you don't need to stand when you're reading the Gospel. And it's okay for you to read the Gospel. In a Eucharist service, only the clergy can read the Gospel. And that's why we have the Gospel procession and we bring the book down into the congregation during the Eucharist service. Okay, so our next reading is from Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 42 through 50. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. 
It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, then cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire, Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now the forward day by day also offers a little meditation on the readings. And today's meditation says, today Jesus calls us salt, a high compliment Jesus reinforces this by asking us to be salty in our relationships, indicating that saltiness is in tandem with peacefulness. Salty, faithful Christians can change the world. Salty people season the families, communities, nourish and enrich the environments in which they live. God sees us as good salt, preserving, nourishing, seasoning, melting, all those incredible properties for which we value salt. This attribute is important to hear for ourselves and to use as encouragement to those around us. The holiness of our saltiness is what preachers preach, teachers teach and parents offer to and receive from their children. The salt of friends can be the most fundamental seasoning of our lives. Be salty, beloved. So it's interesting to know how my children are salty in my life. Uh, my son called me up and shared a little video of him this past weekend um, trying to catch a squirrel that was in his basement. And you know how they say, what goes around comes around. Um, his six-year-old is, is quite a little character and said, Dad, there's a squirrel in the basement. And Jeff didn't believe him, and the six-year-old said, Dad, the squirrel's running around in the basement. And Jeff went down to tell him that he needed to, to toe the line and not be telling stories. And Jeff saw the squirrel in the basement, and there was a squirrel running around, and so he had to catch it. Well, that's sharing some of the saltiness of life. Jeff, Jeff learned a lesson from his little boy, and it was uh, quite a lesson. Okay, after we finish those lessons, we continue on. And we read a canticle. After each reading, a canticle is read. The reading may be heard sitting, but the canticle should be said standing. Again, you may sit throughout if you're by yourself or in a public place and stand up if you are in church. Canticles are generally pieces of scripture which are poetic in some way or even songs. The suggested canticles for morning prayer begin on page 85 and go through page 96. So if we turn to page 86, the first thing you'll notice is that the first canticle is labeled as being number eight. The first seven canticles are found in rite one, the rite that comes before rite two in the prayer book and using the old English, and are repeated in rite two, but written in the more contemporary language. Some canticles are more appropriate for different seasons and you'll see those labeled as such. Canticles eight through 14 are from the Old Testament or the apocryphal books and are best suited to be said following the Old Testament reading. Canticles 9 through 21 are from the New Testament or church tradition and are best suited to follow New Testament readings. This is a suggestion and not a rule. If the number of choices is overwhelming, there's a helpful table on page 144 that offers a selection for each day. 
So we're going to look at the chemicals that come up. Let's see if we can find one that might be familiar. On page 90, the Benedictus. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple and the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Okay, next we're going to go on to the Apostles' Creed. And that's said after the second canticle. And it's found on page 96 of your prayer book. The Apostles' Creed is the basis for our baptism. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we move to the prayers. And this is the final section of morning prayer. In church, we remain standing from now through the end of the service. The salutation, the Lord be with you and also with you, is said, followed by the Lord's Prayer. After the Lord's Prayer, you pray one of two sets of suffrages. Suffrages are a set of short intercessory prayers. The two sets are labeled A or B. Each set of suffrage has letters in front of them. V and R, and they're shorthand for versicle and response, where the reader or efficient says the versicle and the people say the response. Of course, if you're by yourself, you say both. Interestingly, suffrages set B is at the end of the Te Deum, which is Canticle 21, that has been chopped off and included here as a set of suffrages. So if you're using Canticle 21, suffrages B can be a nice choice. So we will begin, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Again, think of all those saints, all those people from past and present, and those to come into our faith, who are praying these prayers with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I'm going to choose suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. 
and you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Then we go to the collect for the day. After the suffrages, you find a listing of collects beginning on page 98. The collects are traditional, in many cases, ancient prayers. Each one is a collection of thoughts around a theme. At morning prayer, three collects should be said, the collect for the day, one of the named collects, and a collect for mission. Now the collect of the day is always the collect from the previous Sunday, unless it is a feast day, in which case the collect of the day is the collect for that feast day. We'll talk about that another time. One of the named collects is said second, and they are referred to as the named collects because they all have a name, like a collect for Friday or a collect for Saturday or a collect for peace. Obviously, the ones named for collects of the week are for those days. The other collects can be used on any day, but here's a hint. There are three collects named after one day of the week and four named for a particular petition. So an easy way to use these is to take the first one not named for a day of the week, the Collect of Renewal of Life, and nickname it a Collect for Mondays. So that's what we're going to do. We'll read a Collect for the Renewal of Life. O God, the Eternal King, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, and then on page 100, we find two colics for mission. So we choose one of those colics. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members in your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the general thanksgiving. Those of you who remember morning prayer will remember this, this prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. And then we choose the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then the concluding verse. My favorite is the third one. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. So that concludes our service of morning prayer. I hope it has enlightened you a little bit about the process, how to follow it through the, the Book of Common Prayer. Please remember that we have extra Books of Common Prayer and we'd be more than happy to, uh, to, to lend one out to you or even to give you one to keep. I hope you'll take advantage of this way to increase your spiritual muscle, to build your relationship with God, and just spend a little time making it holy. Thanks be to God. Amen.